I can list five main characteristics and I'll discuss them uh, after um, I list them all. So number one, optimum particle characteristics, uh, nutrient delivery technology, which I'm talking here about coating technology, a higher concentration, higher bioavailability, which is dependent on the three previous that I just mentioned. And number five, the release mechanism that makes the core readily available for absorption in the small intestine. In other words, you don't want you know, that uh, amino acid to be super protected, that it bypasses the rumen and later has a difficulty in releasing the core. So hello everyone, this is Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we will get a lot of good information about the importance of amino acids, nitrogen, uh, which obviously is a great topic for the dairy industry. And to discuss that with us, we have Dr. Eliot Neto, uh, which is a technical service manager with Caming Animal Nutrition and Health. Uh, first, Eliot, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure that our... Uh, our crew will enjoy a lot, hear a lot of what you have to offer. Uh, but before we get into this very important topic, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Luis. Uh, thanks, everybody. And yes, uh, my name is Elio Neto, Technical Service Manager of Kemin. Uh, I was born and raised in Brazil. Uh, my family still farms uh, in the state of Minas, uh, close to Sao Paulo. In 2007, I went to the UK to do my PhD, and 10 years ago, I moved to Canada uh, for a postdoc where I stayed ever since, and now I work uh, with Kemin Industries, uh, and I provide technical services, you know, research and product development uh, for the west coast of the US. And I'm here today to talk about amino acid utilization and what really has a good amino acid product that will optimize amino acid balancing. Looking to maximize your herd's potential? Elevate performance with Kemen's cutting edge encapsulation technologies, including rumen protected choline, methionine, and lysine. Kemen's advanced choline and amino acid technologies ensure precise nutrient delivery, boosting milk yield and enhancing herd health. Trust Kemen, the experts in encapsulation, to take your herd to the next level. Learn more today at kemen.com forward slash dairy. You know, so let's dive in uh, into this very important topic that is amino acids for the dairy nutritionists. So often we consider amino acids as a great tool to, a great tool to improve milk components in dairy cows, right? But obviously amino acids has many other uh, uses for the cow and it's very important for many reasons. Could you please explain to us a little bit about what else amino acids do to the dairy cows? Yeah, for sure, Luis. Uh, and the first thing is I want to mention, when you're feeding amino acids, uh, you are feeding essential nutrients, right? And that's something there is uh, sometimes is confounding in the industry, uh, and it's not a feed additive. We are feeding essential nutrients. And the other thing I want to clarify is cows, they do not have a uh, crude protein requirement. Instead, they have amino acid requirements to fulfill metabolizable protein needs. And another thing which uh, I want to mention, it's very important to discuss, amino acids in dairy nutrition will only execute the role uh, at the optimum level when the ration is fully balanced, uh, specifically for energy, right? And uh, addressing your question in terms of what are the other functions we have a list of other functions, you know, basically amino acids are related to all the basic, basic biolog biological functions on a dairy cow, uh, including fetal programming, you know, enhancing immune function. We have a lot of uh, uh, immune challenges in U.S. Uh, dairy herds, you know, uh, reproduction, maintaining muscle mass and also uh, body condition score. But in fact, uh, now I'm delving into the nutrigenomics component of the nutrition the lack of balance in the amino acid profile fed to a cow will absolutely uh, affect gene expression, which is not a language I understand resonates with producer because it's hard to connect directly with profitability. 
However, what I can tell you, Luis, is that uh, everything you measure in a farm, especially milk yield and components, needs an optimum DNA function and repair. And that's why amino acids, especially lysine and methylene, are so crucial for dairy cows. No, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of recent, very good uh, research out there that showcase a lot of these nice uh, factors that you mentioned. Um, said that, right, a lot of the things that you mentioned may be related to either health uh, or energy utilization. So can amino acids help farmers to improve feed efficiency? And if yes, how does that happen? Absolutely, Luis. I think uh, the way I like to describe in very simple terms, it's an assembly line analogy, right? So the primary economic benefits of room protect amino acid supplementation lies in the fact that it has a positive impact on milk production because it increases uh, in milk protein synthesis. So in the mammary glands, when you have the correct amount of lysine, methionine, and other amino acids, but as of today, we're just focusing lysine, methionine, uh, we are optimizing protein synthesis. And that way, what we can see, it's higher energy corrected milk, uh, higher feed efficiency. And in some cases, we also see uh, potential improvements in butter fat, which is an indication of optimization of fatty acid synthesis as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, certainly a lot of different things associated with uh, production. But if we go back to the term uh, rumen protected amino acid, right? We know that obviously it has to be protected for a reason, but even the protected amino acids have a lot of variation. And obviously we need products that actually uh, allow us to protect those amino acids from the rumen so it can later be properly utilized. Said that, how does rumen transit time changes bioavailability of rumen protected amino acids? That's a very good question, Luis. And uh, there was a research done in 2019 published on JDS by Dufresne and collaborators. And what they wanted to study was, okay, if we have uh, different particle sizes and also different specific gravities of uh, some products, you know, how long will these products stay in the rumen? Or in other words, how long is going to be the transit time? So basically what they found is when you have technologies which are 2 millimeters in size, in size and about 1.1 to 1.3 is specific gravity, now you're optimizing rumen transit time. Uh, for in average, about 9 hours, that's when that product will stay in the rumen. Uh, on the other hand, if you go for the same size and you diminish a little bit of specific gravity, for example, 0.9, now you quadruple the rumen transit time. That means the product will be subject to rumen degradation and you're not going to be optimizing the absorption in the small intestine. And also, if you go for a higher specific gravity, you know, now you have double retention time. So the combination of particle size and retention time are very crucial, Luis, and you need to have the optimum combination so the product will bypass the rumen and just release the core, the amino acid at exactly uh, right location where it's going to go to the mammary glands. Now, very nice. And uh, if we continue with this topic, right, how, how can we know if a specific product has high bioavailability uh, of amino acids? Uh, like what are the characteristics of a good rumen protected amino acid product? Yeah, so I would I can I can list five main characteristics and I'll discuss them uh, after um, I list them all. So number one, optimum particle characteristics, uh, nutrient delivery technology, which I'm talking here about coating technology, a higher concentration, higher bioavailability, which is dependent on the three previous that I just mentioned, and number five, the release mechanism that makes the core readily available for absorption in the small intestine. In other words, you don't want, you know, that uh, amino acid to be super protected, that it bypasses the rumen and later has a difficulty in releasing the core. So uh, what are these particle characteristics? You need reduced variability. You know, you need the right co-particle size, specific gravity, which I just mentioned from the paper uh, JDS. Uh, the coating technology, is it lipid-based versus new polymers, for example, chitosan shells, right? Higher concentration 
only a few manufacturing capabilities can put a lot of a concentration in, uh, inside of the encapsulation because those uh, that the core will interact with the coating, right? So you need you know a lot of chemi chemi chemical engineers, a lot of uh, uh, science and technology to have the high concentration in the product. And once you have high concentration, the right nutrient delivery technology and the optimum particle characteristics, you know, now you have higher bioavailability, meaning that the concentration of amino acids that you have in the core will become now absorbed and will be maximizing protein synthesis in the mammary gland. Now, very nice and certainly a very nice overview with a lot of factors that sometimes we kind of overlook, right? Or underlook, to be fair, right? Uh, but if you allow me to change gears here a little bit and move towards the big picture, right? So why nitrogen excretion is so important to the dairy industry and how rumen protected amino acid fits into our goal of reducing uh, the excretion of nitrogen? Yeah, that's a very important and timely question, Luis, because uh, as we know, the rumen uh, is our friend, right? It, it has uh, a huge amount of uh, uh, chemical reactions, which we optimize, you know, to produce uh, high quality protein for the consumers. Uh, however, this complexity of the rumen also makes us nutritionists uh, to have some challenge in terms of understanding how to maximize fermentation. And one of them is actually, you know, the nitrogen excretion part. So everything we talk about uh, amino acids here is that we want to bypass the rumen uh, as much as we can to meet the requirements of lysine methionine uh, because the more we bypass, right, uh, the lower the reliance on the rumen to metabolize nitrogen for us. And the lower that reliance, the lower the nitrogen excretion will be. And in fact, I was talking to Dr. Frank Midloner from UC Davis, and he mentioned to me that uh, we have a lot of discussions and conversation about methane emissions in dairy cows. Uh, and he said, you know, my real concern at the dairy industry is in fact nitrogen excretion, right? And as an industry already doing a lot and rumen protect amino acids, you know, they come in handy for us to minimize crude protein right, to maximize output and milk and milk components and, you know, to meet future uh, regulatory pressures, for example, which are already happening in some places, optimize nitrogen uh, and nutrient efficiency, right? And the concept of precision nutrition is something that, you know, most of the nutritions, nutritions are already utilizing. I think what we need to do is a better job to inform the consumers how much technology we have on a dairy farm, how much technology we have on you know, a dairy cow ration and how much technology we have, as I discussed here today, on a room protected product, right? Uh, so with all that, I think we're already doing a lot for nitrogen excretion and sustainability. Uh, bear in mind that in my view, sustainability, uh, the number one sustainability factor is economic sustainability needs to be profitable. But then after the profitability, now we are addressing and uh, in a very good terms with high technology, the nitrogen excretion in our dairy industry. And I think we need to be more vocal as an industry to showcase that uh, a dairy cow ration has so much uh, technology into it. So, No, absolutely. Certainly, it's one, uh, rumen protected amino acids is one of the great technologies out there that, you know, you, you showcase nicely how not only changes, you know, new components with its key for payment, health of the dairy animals, sustainability, and probably we'll be learning more and more in the future of the importance of the different amino acids and how we can continue to improve their nutrition uh, through this uh, important technology. Uh, thank you so much, Elliot, for joining us today. I'm sure people at home will truly enjoy learning everything about room and protected amino acids and nitrogen excretion. Uh, and for you at home, I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much and uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.